Hello, I'm Hugh Wallace, Senior XBRL Strategist at IBM. I'd like to share with you a brief introduction to how IBM Cognos Disclosure Management can help your organization to meet the ever-changing requirements of the European Union's Capital Requirements Directive 4, often referred to as COREP FINREP. As one of the authors of the XBRL specification, I've been involved with XBRL since its very beginning in 1999. I've been actively involved with the work done by the Eurofiling Group to help the European regulators build an XBRL-based framework for reporting over the past few years, and I'm delighted that it is finally being implemented. Naturally, I believe that what we're doing here at IBM in this regard is world-leading, and I hope to convince you of that in this short video. No doubt you've already been through the first cycle of filings that were due by the end of June this year and have probably had some mixed feelings about the process and what is going to be involved as you move forward to the next reporting periods. The European Banking Authority have outlined a roadmap for the next year or so that includes a number of changes to what you have already been doing, and these changes are planned to come thick and fast. For example, there's a whole set of additional reports required in Q3, FINREP, more in Q4, asset encumbrance, and yet more after that. In addition, there have been changes made to the existing reports that you've only just managed to get a handle on, and there are undoubtedly more of those to come as well. As a result of all this, the XBRL taxonomy that is needed if you're filing in XBRL to your national regulator is constantly being changed. This means that you need to be sure that the linkage between your reports and the taxonomy is kept up to date. That is a potentially pretty complex technical task. You may not be confident that the solution you use for the first filing is up to it without your having to do a lot of rework. In addition, you've probably found that making sure your reports satisfy all the consistency rules defined in the regulatory mandate is a frustrating and complicated task. Layer on top of that local national variations that you may be dealing with, some of which are not well communicated or only found out by accident, and you might well be having some sleepless nights. If you're at all concerned about how you'll be able to cope with these issues, I'd like to show you how we at IBM have come up with an approach that will ease the pain and reduce the effort involved to a minimum. There will still be effort, of course, but our goal is to make that as easy as possible, though. IBM Cognos Disclosure Management, or CDM, is an industrial strength reporting platform used by hundreds of organizations around the world for internal, external, and statutory reporting. It is based on Microsoft Office and so enables you to work in an environment with which you are probably very familiar. It includes comprehensive connectivity to data sources, a workflow management capability that can be as sophisticated or simple as you care to make it, dashboarding and user collaboration commentary capabilities, archiving functions, and much, much more. We have added to all this some powerful features specifically designed to address the pain points of the Corrup FinREP reporting mandate that I mentioned previously. This video will focus on just these additional features. When you're setting up your Corrup FinREP reporting environment in CDM, you can choose one of the many filing packages that are provided with the product. These packages are specifically constructed to provide all the templates and XBRL connectivity that you need. National variations are accounted for. If your national regulator has rules or requirements that vary from those defined by the European Banking Authority, or EBA, then they are reflected in the package version that you would use. When you're setting up your report, you can choose which reporting period you're working on, and the set of template forms is automatically provided to match that period. Some templates are required only for quarterly reporting, some semi-annually, and some only annually. The filing package is smart enough to know which ones you need and to provide you with only those. After selecting a few other parameters, such as the currency you're reporting in and the accuracy to which you are providing the data in the report, such as thousands of pounds, four decimal places for ratios and so on, you can then choose which of those templates available you want to include in your report. 
Some of the templates need to be repeated with a version for different currencies or countries. You can choose which you want according to your needs. At any time during the preparation of your report, you can easily add or remove these versions should you find that you need to do so, using the same wizard style approach as in the initial setup. Now that you have your report's template forms all set up, you can proceed to connect them to your data sources using the standard features of CDM. You can source your values from relational database tables, OLAP cubes, external Excel workbooks, HFM, or any OLEDB or ODBC connection. To those data sources, you connect right from the Excel-based template forms. And, most importantly, you can use query variables so that the data is automatically updated for any new periods for which you need to report in future. This is all a standard CDM feature. Some of the template forms are what is called open y-axis templates. These are ones where the number of rows is not predefined, being dependent on the nature of your business. Forms like Detailed Information on Securitizations, C14.00. Here, the data typically comes from a relational table, and the Excel form is populated with as many rows as the query returns. One of the most significant pain points in preparing these reports is the validation process. The regulator has defined a large number of rules, over 2,000 in fact, that the data reported must adhere to. Many of these rules are actually applied more than once, where there are multiple versions of a template form representing different countries or currencies, for example. These clearly need to be evaluated by the software, as this would be far too much to do manually. However, the XBRL rule set provided with the taxonomy has a number of significant shortcomings. First, it requires the XBRL to be generated before it can be applied. Secondly, not all the rules can be expressed in XBRL, only about 96% in fact. Thirdly, it can take well over an hour to run the rules on a complete report. Fourthly, the messages returned from the XBRL rules are very hard to interpret. Fifthly, where a rule has been run many times, the message returned does not identify specifically where the source of the error is to be found. Some software does not even have any built-in validation, but users are expected to run test filings to the regulator and make use of their validation results. Typically, there is a very long turnaround time for this, and often the error messages received back are difficult or even impossible to interpret. CDM has solved these problems by doing validation on the fly. Every time data is updated and saved, the rules appropriate to the form being worked on are run in the background. When an error is found, the error message shows in detail what the error is and includes direct clickable links that take the user to the exact template form and cell involved. In this way, it is easy to find the mistake and correct it. Since this all happens before the XBRL is generated, the issues are found as soon as possible in the report preparation process. This saves last minute panics where errors are discovered very late in the process. This is a significant help in ensuring that the data reported will not be rejected by the regulator. Once you're happy with the report, you can generate the XBRL instance and, if required for additional validation, the XBRL validation rules can be run as well as an additional check before submitting the final output to the regulator. Now that you've completed your filing successfully, you can roll forward to the next filing period. If there have been changes to the report's structure and or taxonomy from this period to the next, these will automatically be identified and incorporated into the next period's templates. You will, of course, still need to check that the connections to your data are updated for any changed requirements, but all the connections you have built for data requirements that are unchanged will be retained. Of course, once you have CDM for Corrup FinRep, you have a most powerful tool that provides much, much more than simply meeting the CRD4 mandate. 
the data you've collected for these reports can be enhanced with additional data, narrative, tables, and graphical presentations to create compelling Word, PowerPoint, and PDF reports for both internal and external use. Brochure quality documents can be produced using Adobe InDesign and, no matter which output format you use, including XBRL, reports can be rolled forward from period to period, delivering a robust, sustainable solution and high return on investment for years to come. I hope this short video has provided some insight into how you can use the powerful features of CDM to be confident that you can produce your required reports accurately and on time. For more information, please ask your IBM sales representative for a detailed demonstration. Thank you for spending this time with me. We wish you well in your endeavours to meet the ever-changing, complex requirements of the European Financial System Regulators. IBM and IBM Cognos Disclosure Management is here to make sure that this is as smooth and painless as possible.